All right, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you some tips on how you can make using your Z Fold 7 a little bit easier and smoother and just faster. And also just some quality of life tips that might help you in different things you wanna do. So let's get into it. The first thing you wanna do is go to settings, then navigate to display. You're gonna go down and go to your taskbar. So here you can customize how many recommended apps you see or recent apps you see right here at the bottom. It shows you these recent apps or recommended apps. You can toggle how many show or you can just turn it off completely. So now there's no more recommended apps on your taskbar. And then the other thing is when you first get this phone, I'm pretty sure the taskbar is going to be on or it's going to be off. Either way, you have two modes by default. So they stay on where it's just always on no matter what app you're in. But you also have this auto hide where you can swipe slightly just to bring it up, use it, and then it will disappear. You can choose either one of those options for whatever you want you want. But just know that when the taskbar is on, some of your screen real estate is going to be used but that leads into the next tip so go to advanced features and what you're going to do here is go to multi-window and then this right here full screen and split screen view so without that mode on your screen real estate is not going to be maximized as you can see there's a big gap down here and there's a big gap at the top you're not fully using the screen when you're in split screen so what you can do is instead of having to turn off the taskbar completely you can just do full screen and split screen and now the screen is being completely used. This is really good for gaming, for watching videos at the top, playing a game at the bottom, or just you know multitasking with three apps at a time. It just gives you a little bit more space to work with. So I leave that on. And then while we're here, multi-window swipe for a split screen. So this allows you to use two fingers to swipe either from the bottom for a split screen at the bottom or at the right side or the left side so this is just a quick way to get into a split screen session it will show you your most used apps it'll show you your apps that are open right now and then all the apps on your phone you can also look at your app drawer with this button or press this to search for an app if you're somebody who's not used to multitasking and stuff like that using this gesture is just so much faster than going to the task switcher like this and then pressing the icon and pressing this very very slow just do the two finger gesture and then for this you basically go to the top right corner and then you swipe down and then you can resize the window to whatever you want. This is a floating window or a pop-up window and you can throw it off to the side, bring it back and just keep resize it and use it however you want. Then you can also go into this. If you tap it, you can adjust the sensitivity of it or like the, the area where it works. So you see this blue square right here, adjust how far out it is, how small it is, etc. If you're having trouble doing it or if you're doing it too much by accident, you can just make it smaller. So there you go just some better ways to navigate your phone and also initiate multitasking. The next thing I recommend you take advantage of on the Z Fold 7 is the ability to play audio streams in two different places. Go to sounds and vibration, go all the way down, separate app sound. This is really cool. So basically you turn this on, you can choose specific apps that you want this to apply to. So you can add any app on your phone. Basically what this allows you to do is that it allows you to play these specific apps on either your phone or your Bluetooth device. So if you have earphones, let's say you wanna to listen to music, but then you have a, a kid who wants to watch a video on your phone, what you can do is you can select this. So now the apps that are selected here will only play on Bluetooth when the Bluetooth device is connected. You can put your earphones in and listen to your music at the same time as your kid watching YouTube. So YouTube is not enabled here. Now I can play YouTube out loud from the built-in speakers of the phone while listening to YouTube music in my earphones at the same exact time. So two audio streams going to two different places. Just an amazing, powerful feature on the Z Fold 7 and honestly just Samsung phones in general. So definitely take advantage of this feature for sure. The next thing I recommend doing or turning on for the Z Fold 7 is the flex mode panel. So basically the flex mode panel is a panel that pops up when you put your phone in flex mode like this and it allows you to do different things. So if I go into Chrome, flex mode, this will pop up. With this icon, you can just tap it and then it will start flex mode. In internet browsers, it will give you a, a touchpad that works with multi-touch as well. So you can zoom in and out. You can scroll up and down. You can also use the scroll wheel as well for more precision. And then it allows you to do different things. So you, on the side, you can turn on and off the trackpad. You have screenshot, you can bring down your notification shade and you can start a split screen session. Then here you have a little bit more things like settings. You can adjust the volume of your phone, adjust the screen brightness, and then also screen recorder and quick settings. These shortcuts are really nice and you can also customize what is on the outside, what is on the inside as well. Just tap and hold and then you can drag the icons. 
And then you can also press this button right here in the corner to just turn it off. Flexmo panel is really cool. For me personally, I use it for browsers. I also use it for video apps. So currently at the moment, YouTube is the only one that takes advantage of affordable phone when you put it into Flexmo like this. YouTube will give you a player at the bottom where you can play, pause, skip, and scrub through a video. Other video apps like let's say Crunchyroll, Netflix, etc., they don't necessarily take advantage of a folding phone screen like that when you fold your phone like this. So Flexmo panel actually gives you video controls on apps that don't have that built in. So what I recommend doing is auto show Flexmo panel when folded and you can choose specific apps. So you can either turn it on for all apps, but specifically I would turn it on for like Crunchyroll or something like that. And then, so now when I'm in Crunchyroll and I bend my phone, it will automatically show me the controls at the bottom. And so I can play, pause, scrub through the, the episode of the anime that I'm watching, etc. This is just really nice if you have your phone propped up like this because the reason why you use the hinge like this is just for convenience. Like with a normal phone, if you're watching a video, you know, you put it down on the table, it's flat. With your Z Fold device, you can bend it at 90 degrees or a little bit past that, put it down, and then you can watch anime and control it very quickly. Like let's say you're washing the dish or something like that, you just quickly bend your phone and you're good to go. With a regular phone, you can't do that. I recommend you use the flex mode panel for that kind of use case. And then you can do other things as well. Going back to multitasking, go into labs. So this is advanced features in the settings and then labs. And you just want to turn on this multi window for all apps. This will force every single app to work with split screen and pop up view. And you just have no issues with multitasking. So just turn that on. And then also you have this right here, landscape view for portrait apps. This is very important. Like let's say a certain app doesn't go into landscape view it only stays in portrait. So like you open the app and then it forces you to rotate your phone back to portrait or something like that. You can turn on this mode for that app specifically, and then it will force the app to open into landscape as well. And then the next thing that I recommend using or taking advantage of on your Z Fold 7 is Bixby. Bixby is actually pretty useful. Even with Google Assistant on, you can have both of them active at the same times. But one thing I like about Bixby that is cool is that you can change the name of this smart assistant. So if you go into labs, you can create a wake up phase. So like, let's say I want to change the name of my Bixby on this phone to galaxy or something like that. Then you can do that here. It will ask you to say the phrase, repeat it and stuff like that. And then boom, it will learn it. Like for example, here is hello phone. So hello phone. See like that is so cool that you can have custom voice wake up phrases for Bixby. It's just really tough. And then I also really like, even without that, that you can just have the name instead of hi. Like that's something that Siri does as well. I think it's pretty cool. But beyond just waking up the voice assistant on this phone, Bixby is good for like quick things like turning on flashlight, opening the app, taking a screenshot, like just basic things, starting a timer. I find that Bixby is more reliable than, especially now that Google is shifting to Gemini. Gemini is not that good for basic things. And so if you turn on Gemini, a lot of devices come with it on by default. Unless you switch back to the Google Assistant, it just sucks for simple things like that. So Bixby is really nice for simple things. It just makes using your device so much faster, smoother, and even like respond to messages, all that stuff, reading your notifications, Bixby can do all that. Read my notifications. Do you give Bixby permission to access? There's two notifications. Neon Airship. What if the CMF Phone 2 Pro is actually modular? Jeff Martin, 3,058,043. Like you're real. Another cool thing about Bixby is that you can use it while it's locked. You can also set it so that you can talk to it without the wake up. So let's say you have a phone call coming, then you can say answer phone or reject call, dismiss alarm, snooze, dismiss timer, restart. You can say those things when these things are popping up on your phone without having to even wake up Bixby in the first place. So that is really sick. And then the last thing I'll mention about Bixby is that you can change the way the voice sounds like you can create a custom voice. I think it's just really cool for quality of life and customization of your smart assistant on your phone. And like I said, you can use this in addition to Google Assistant or Gemini. Like you can activate both of those smart assistants on your phone whenever you need either one of them. So that is really cool. It doesn't take away from anything that Google does. The next thing that I want to show you is the now bar. So the now bar is actually pretty cool. It works with media players and sports from Google Maps, Samsung Health and smart things like just a few different things. There's not a lot right now on the list, but I think this will improve over time. But one of the best things about it for me is sports from Google. So the way that you get sports notifications, it will give you updates for, let's say, a, a basketball game that's on right now. It will tell you like the score, you know, maybe the latest play and stuff like that. 
and then it will be in the little pill and you can expand it. The way you get that is you go to sports from Google settings. You search for the league and the team that you are a fan of or whatever, or that you want to see stats for in the now bar. And then you just select them and choose follow. And then now it will be synced to your Google account. So be aware of that. If you have another device that gets notifications from Google sports, they will start getting those notifications. But once you follow those teams, whenever there's a game on, the now bar will start to show that. And then also on your lock screen as well. So I'm going to show you how that looks with some media controls. So I'm playing a song now. If I leave the app, it goes up to the now bar. If I just tap it, then boom, it's expanded. I can interact with it. And if there was more things going on, like let's say I'll actually do that for you. I'll start a timer to let's say I have this going as well. So now my now bar is stacked and I can actually swipe between the different things that are going on. It's kind of like Apple's dynamic island, but I think it's just a great addition to Samsung devices as well. Like I, I'm a fan of Dynamic Island, so I'm glad we have this. And yeah, being able to just interact with things like your timers and your media that's playing, pause, skip. You can even scrub, which I really love. The fact that you can scrub through the audio, that's just so tough. Samsung devices now, especially the Z Fold 7, have this full screen always on display, which is really nice, kind of like the iPhones again. I love that we took that from iPhones. And while your phone is locked, you can actually interact with your media player. So you can double tap the screen while it's still locked. The screen is off, it's still in always on display mode and you can skip songs, you can play songs, pause. One cool thing that I like to do, especially when I'm in the car driving and I have my phone playing music to my car, I'll open it and then expand this and then you can lock the screen and then boom. Now you have this view on your always on display and you can still interact with it by skipping songs, playing songs, turning on shuffle, liking the song, just very clean integration of are always on display and you know this new now bar media player type thing it's super cool so i love using this mode and then when you have like a sports game playing as well you can actually tap that sports game the whole stats and have it expanded and then lock your screen and then you'll still see that as well and this works for youtube videos and other things so i definitely recommend taking advantage of the now bar even for the timer look at that you have a real-time timer showing on your always on display the phone is locked right now the screen is is off it's not using that much power it's down to like one hertz and I still have an active timer going and I can actually double tap it to pause it, double tap to play and also, you know, make a lap. Like that is that is just so tough. Amazing functionality. I love the now bar and I hope that it keeps getting more stuff. So take advantage of that. It's really good. Another thing that you can take advantage of on a big screen like this is quickly enter into a floating window or a split screen session from your notifications. So See how I have a notification here? So we tap and hold, and then you can drag it and drop it into a floating window or a split screen. So if I go to a split screen, it will allow me to choose any app, floating window, it is a floating window or a pop-up view. So that is really cool and you can resize it quickly. That's just another way that you can actually utilize this big screen very quickly. So if you get a notification pop-up, you can just grab it and start multitasking just like that. Or have it in a pop-up without whatever you're doing being interrupted. Another tip for this phone is that Samsung actually has a really good suite of apps. So I definitely recommend you check them out, like the calendar app and other apps. They're just really good. But if you use Samsung's first party apps, you have the ability to turn off the background on the widgets. I think this is really nice because it gives you this clear aesthetic. And personally, I actually like to use this icon pack. I'll show you it. I'm going to go to good lock and then I'm going to go to theme park, go to icons and then apply my icon pack. I already did it. So now I just have to apply it and boom. Now I have this nice transparent aesthetic and theme. It just looks so tough. So if you want this icon pack, it is called Retro Mode. So I'm gonna just show you Retro Mode Lite. Find this in the Play Store. This icon pack is really cool. It's like two to three dollars, I think. Samsung's widgets being able to be transparent really fits this aesthetic and it's just something that I love. Unfortunately, with One UI 7, they took away the ability to make every single one completely transparent with the background. Some of the widgets, they can only go to like, you know, 30% transparency or something like that. The cool thing is that you can also turn the folders into transparent folders as well. When you apply an icon pack, you lose the ability to do that. So just make sure you turn the folders transparent before you apply your icon pack. And if you forget, you can always just go back to the default one and then tap the folder, go to this, and this is the transparency. You just put it to zero and then it will be transparent. It will be completely background free. It's just a cool aesthetic that I like. So that's another tip, I guess. If you don't know about this, expanded folders are also here on Samsung devices. So if you just tap and hold a folder, you can enlarge it. And 
The cool thing about this is not just the fact that it's bigger, but it's also that you can access these apps really quickly. For example, this space is just four apps on, on your home screen, like one, two, three, four. That's the space that this folder is taking up. But now you have three, six, eight apps that you can actually just tap and open quickly from the folder without having to go into the folder like this. So expanded folders really makes your home screen more condensed, but still a lot more accessible for the apps. Like just quickly accessing the apps without going into the folder really nice. So I definitely recommend you tap and hold and take advantage of the enlarged folders. Then the other thing that I recommend you take advantage of, this will be the last tip, is the edge panel. I know a lot of people don't like the edge panel or whatever, but the edge panel is actually really nice because it allows you to navigate your phone a little bit faster and also gives you some cool tools. So for me, the way I use the edge panel is you can tap and hold and move it to either side of the screen. You can move it up and down. So I put it to where, you know, my gestures are not interrupted my backswipe gesture is not interrupted. So right about here, or may, maybe a little bit higher. So now, you know, backswipe gesture is not interrupted, but I can access the edge panel whatever I want very quickly. And the way I use the edge panel is I use it mainly for uh, a quick pop-up app. So like, let's say I'm, you know, on Google Chrome, I'm searching something that I also want to get like the calendar in a pop-up to calculate something. Boom, now I have the calendar and I can just calculate that real quick. It's not a split screen, it's just a pop-up. You can also use the edge panel for a split screen session as well. I use it for that sometimes, but like I mainly use it for pop-ups. So that's why I have certain apps here. Like for example, the clock, my email app, maps, settings, things that I would like to use, but not like fully take over the screen. That's the purpose of the edge panel for me when it comes to like using apps or accessing apps. So if you go here, go back to the edge panel in home up on good luck, you can change it to just full screen. So now, so if I access the edge panel and I tap app, it will open in full screen instead of pop up or split screen. This is also good too, because now you have a little bit more control, I guess. So you can actually be intentional and like grab the app and put it into a split screen or a pop up view if you wanted to. But I recommend you take advantage of the edge panel because it's just like another place where you can have apps that you might need at any moment in time. In addition to the taskbar, the taskbar is nice too, but it can only have up to 12 apps with good luck. And I think the edge panel is just more condensed, especially if you enable this to have three rows of apps, you can just boom, just access it so quickly. But the other cool thing about the edge panel is if you go to the gear wheel, you will come to this menu and here you have different things that you can enable with the edge panels. One particular one that I like to use is the tools. So the tools edge panel is basically, if you swipe over, that's how you access your different edge panels. This gives you a bunch of different tools like a compass, a tally counter, a flashlight where you can control the brightness of the flashlight. That's pretty cool. And then the surface leveler, that is so tough. Like imagine, you know, you need a, a, a leveler, but you don't have one. You can now do that with your Z Fold 7 very quickly and easily with the edge panel. Then you also have a ruler. You can use your phone as a ruler. Just a quick little toolkit. I think it's, it's pretty nice. Then you have the clipboard as well. The clipboard is like your keyboard clipboard. So things that you copy, you can easily use this to paste things very quickly. And also images as well. You can use it to just drag and drop images in different apps. It's very nice in that way. There's a couple more edge panels you can enable like people for quick dialing or quick messaging, certain contexts, different tasks that you can set. You can start a voice recording real quick or, you know, open a new note with a specific thing or set a new timer, stuff like that. And then you also have the weather, so you can swipe over to see the weather. Then you also have the reminders app, Samsung's reminder app. You can have it built into your edge panel to quickly see your reminders wherever you are on the app, which is pretty useful to be honest. I might have to use that one. You can add a reminder and you can just open the app as well to see all your reminders. I, I go crazy with it, as you can see. So yeah, edge panel, I definitely recommend you take advantage of it. And like I said, it's very customizable, so you can move where it is on your screen, either side of the screen and at any height. And then if you go into the settings and go to edge panel, you can also adjust how big the handle is. So you can increase the size, you can increase the width, and then you can also change the color of it, which I think is pretty cool. The customization is there. You know, you're not limited to it just being visible or in your way. You can actually make it like pretty transparent. So high transparency, and now it basically has no color. It's not, it's there, but it's not there. So if you don't like how it looks on the screen when it's chilling there, you can move it. You can maximize the transparency and then, you know, you can move wherever you want on your phone screen. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility with Samsung software and anything that you might want to do and use on your phone. But yeah, I just these are some of the things I recommend you take advantage of and use for your Z Fold 7. It just is a, it's such an amazing device and there's a lot you can do. And hopefully these things make it a little bit easier.